One thing I love making is cinnamon rolls. Myself, my family, we all love them. And it's really one of our most cherished holiday traditions. And of course, sometimes we like it on just a random rainy day Sunday that happens in the fall. We're gonna make three different fall flavors that I know you are going to love. So first off is our apple butter cinnamon buns. And now this is made with some homemade apple butter and you can find the recipe for this on castironrecipes.com. This is made with a really delicious uh, Tennessee whiskey from Old Smoky and it's got carrot, salted caramel in it. Super good. The other flavors that we're also making today is a hot fudge marshmallowy kind of a uh, cinnamon roll. I haven't quite come up with a name for it yet. And then of course a pumpkin spice cinnamon roll. So we're gonna get started now with putting together the dough for our apple butter cinnamon rolls. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to measure out three quarter cup of milk and we're gonna heat this up until it's between 100 and 110 degrees. That way we can add our yeast to it. It's really important that you make sure that the yeast goes into a liquid, whether it's milk or water, that is uh, between those temperatures. Any cooler, and it's not going to activate any higher. Um, 120 is where the yeast starts to die off due to the temperature of the liquid. So I've got the milk here in a, just a nice little glass measuring cup and we're gonna stick it in the microwave for about 45 seconds and then check it with an instant read thermometer. Now while that's warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and get my yeast out of the refrigerator. Anytime you have an open jar of yeast, which is certainly what I would recommend, especially if you deal with breads and making cinnamon rolls and things like that on more of a regular basis, this is far more uh, worth your money versus getting the individual packets. Now you're gonna want this active dry yeast. If you get instant yeast or rapid yeast, it doesn't work exactly the same. There's no proofing needed with it. But with active dry yeast, we do need to activate it. And when you're not using yeast and yet it's already open, best idea is to keep it in the fridge or in the freezer to extend its shelf life. So we've got our milk out of the microwave and we're gonna pop open our instant read thermometer, kind of give it a little stir just to make sure there's no hot spots in there. And we are at 105, so perfect. So I'm just gonna take the bowl right out of the stand mixer and we're gonna do everything right in here. So I'm gonna pour our milk right in there. And if you do have packets, you'll use one packet of your active dry yeast. If you do not have packets, if you have a jar like I do, you are going to use two and one quarter teaspoons to equal that one packet or that uh, quarter ounce of active dry yeast. Okay, so we're gonna put that in there set that to the side. And now we're also going to add a little bit of sugar. And I have some local honey here. I love using local honey. And I did have to heat it up in the microwave just in because of the jar that it was in. So let's make sure that that's not too hot. And it is. So good thing I checked because you do want to add a little bit of uh, sugar or oil to this. It kind of helps to feed the yeast and to uh, wake them up and get them, helps them to start activating, gives them a little bit of food to eat. But if I had poured in this hot honey, we would have killed the yeast instead of feeding them. We certainly don't want to do that. So I'm going to give it a quick minute to just cool down and then we will add it into our yeast mixture. Okay, now you only need a couple of tablespoons of this honey to really get it going. You can, of course, use sugar or you can use some olive oil or any other kind of 
oil that you have kicking around. Um, I just really like the added benefits of honey. So that's what we are using. Next, what you're gonna need is one egg and one yolk. You'll need four tablespoons or a quarter cup of melted butter. So if you have your butter and it's not melted, now's the time to do Because again, even once the yeast is activated, we want to make sure that none of our ingredients are too hot to either kill the yeast or um, make any scrambled eggs in our dough. We certainly don't wanna do that. And we are also going to need a teaspoon or so, maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. One thing to keep in mind is when working with yeast, whenever you are feeding your yeast and getting it to activate, you do not want to add in salt. Salt will actually prohibit the growth and the um, activation of the yeast. So if you don't have sugar or you don't have oil on hand to uh, be able to give them a little bit of extra help and extra love in that way, just don't add anything. And it is going to take about five minutes for this yeast to activate. And then we're gonna move on with the rest of our steps. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and our yeast is looking good. You'll be able to tell that it is ready by the amount of foam kind of going on here. Foamy yeast is a good sign of active yeast. So now we're gonna start adding the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna add our eggs and melted butter. Again, make sure that that butter is not too hot. We don't want scrambled eggs. And just a pinch of salt. Okay, so now we're going to put this back onto our stand mixer. And we're just gonna use the dough hook, one less tool to have to clean. And we're gonna put this on a two or a four for the speed and to get this nice and blended. Okay, so now that that is nice and blended, we are going to add our all-purpose flour. You can also use bread flour if you happen to have an excess of that. And so proper measuring of flour is scooping into it. You don't want to just take the measuring cup and scoop it into flour because that's going to compact everything. To more accurately measure your flour, you're going to take a spoon and just kind of shake it out over your measuring cup. We're gonna need about three cups of this, but we're gonna start one cup at a time. So we've got a bit of a mound here, and I'm just going to easily, gracefully there, try and level it off as best we can. So I'm gonna start by adding, by adding that cup of flour in and we'll start mixing. Again, we've got it on a speed of four. And I'm gonna start measuring out the second cup of flour. As it begins to get incorporated, we're gonna keep adding more flour until the stickiness and the tackiness of it kind of goes away. It's still going to stick to the bottom of the bowl, which I will show you, but it's going to pull away from the sides. So let me keep adding some flour and I'll show you what it looks like along the way. Now you'll start to notice the tackiness of this dough and we've already added two cups of flour and we're going to add our third. I add the third once the dough has all kind of combined from that second cup and it gets a little sticky like this. This is just going to help ensure that our flour doesn't go everywhere as we add it. I'm adding a half a cup at a time and we'll put it on low until it starts getting sticky again and continue adding the flour. We may end up adding close to three and a half cups, just depending on the humidity and temperature and all kinds of fun weather factors. So you'll know your dough is ready to move on to the next proofing stage when it looks like this. You'll see that the dough starts to look shaggy, uh, but it is, it starts to look shaggy and it's kind of clung around the dough hook itself, but it's still sticking to the bottom of the bowl here. So now we're just going to clean the dough off of this, and then we're going to move our dough to a greased 
bowl, a large grease bowl. You wanna make sure that it has plenty of room to expand during its proofing. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to coat this in oil. You can use olive oil, any kind of oil that you want. You just wanna make sure that it's a little slick so that the dough can easily climb up the side of the bowl without sticking to the bowl. An easy way that I do that is using Pam cooking spray. We're just gonna give it a light coat there, form it into a nice looking ball. It should be pretty sticky, but it shouldn't be sticking to your hands. It shouldn't really leave any of that extra dough behind as you form it into a ball. So then we're gonna put it in here, flatten it just a little bit roll it over just to make sure that we got some of that oil on all sides. Now I'm gonna cover this in plastic wrap just to keep the heat really in there. And I'm gonna move it over to the side, let it do its proofing, and I know it's ready once it's filled the bowl. And so I'm gonna tidy up this a little bit and start on our next three dough batches, which will be about the same, but I'll show you after a few things that I did a little bit differently. Okay, so we've got our second dough in here uh, being prepared, that is, and we are working on a pumpkin spice dough. We activated the yeast, but instead of using honey, I used a little bit of maple syrup to get that activated. And then we added one egg and one third cup of pumpkin puree. Now, not pumpkin, pumpkin pie filling. We used just pure pumpkin puree. And so that's gonna take care of the uh, fat and oil, the, the butter, and it's also going to um, help to substitute a little bit for the missing egg yolk. So there's no butter in here. So it's just gonna be the pumpkin puree. Like I said, one egg. I've got, I um, believe I put a couple more tablespoons of <laughs> maple syrup in there. So total about a quarter cup of maple syrup goes into this pure maple syrup, not the fake stuff, and two teaspoons, two to three teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. So we're gonna mix this up, and then I'm gonna add the flour just as before, and then we'll set this one aside and let it start proofing. Okay, this one is the same way. It's all nicely mixed and starting to fold over on itself like a pretzel. This one is a little bit stickier than our apple butter apple butter cinnamon rolls, but that's okay. Okay, so next we're gonna work on our s'mores cinnamon rolls. So this is gonna start exactly the same. We've got our milk and our yeast that's been activated, all nice and foamy. And we're going to add our one egg plus our one yolk. So this is going to start much, much more similar to the apple butter dough. So we're gonna add the melted butter. It's gonna cool just a little bit, but we're gonna add the melted butter. We're also going to add vanilla bean paste. This is really um, just gonna help drive home the kind of sugary, fluff, uh, marshmallowy flavor that we're gonna have going on um, and really complement the chocolate. So we've got about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla bean paste. Love this stuff, I always have it on hand. Um, if you don't have this, you can of course use vanilla extract. I just love the way that the vanilla beans really have more of a vanilla prominent flavor. And we're gonna see those nice speckles in the dough. We're also gonna add in just a pinch of salt Try and offset some of that sweetness. Okay, so on this final one that we're doing today, Going to dust the tabletop here just a bit. Grab this dough. Certainly still a little bit on the sticky side. 
dough is just going to be different based on the ingredients and the weather. Our day today has been uh, pretty overcast and rainy, so our humidity and everything is changing hour by the hour. So something to keep in mind. So now, because I don't have another bowl, I'm just going to go ahead and spray it right in here. and tuck it in there and cover this and put this to the side to proof with our other three doughs. Now it's going to take about an hour to an hour and a half for each dough to do its full first rise. And then after that, we're going to be rolling them out and filling them. You can leave them to rise longer. So if you're doing multiple batches like I am today, you can certainly put these all to the side and they can proof for a little bit longer if you want to roll all three of them out at the same time. Otherwise, you're just going to work in succession of when each one is ready. So let's go ahead and get this put to the side. I'm going to get tidied up here and that way we will be ready to roll out the dough when the time comes. All right, so our doughs have been proofing for about an hour, give or take. We're going to start with the apple butter cinnamon rolls. So what we're going to need to do is take some flour and just really be liberal about it. Dust your surface. Keep that to the side. We're going to need a rolling pin and you're going to want to dust that too. This is our apple butter dough. So there's no apple butter in it yet, but this is our cinnamon roll dough. As you can see, it's pretty much filled the bowl now. It has definitely doubled in size. I could have left it to go for a little bit longer, but we're gonna get this rolled out. I am saving this plastic wrap. Just put it to the side. We're gonna use that again. Dump it out and dust the top a little bit. And now we're gonna roll this out into a rectangle as best as we can. It's not the easiest thing to do, at least it's not for me. Okay, and so especially to start, I've rolled it out in front of me. Now I'm gonna take it and flip it. This helps to prevent it from sticking. We don't need all this flour, but now we're gonna roll it the other way. Okay, look how beautiful that is. All right, so now we're gonna add our apple butter. Give it a quick shake. Again, you can find this recipe on castironrecipes.com. This is a caramel whiskey apple butter. And yes, it is as good as it tastes. Oh, it's, and it smells so good too. Okay, I need a little spoon. Okay, and now we're just going to spoon about three quarters of a cup of this apple butter on here. And so this is thick, but it's not super sticky the way that regular butter is. It's, you know, got a little more of a texture similar to applesauce. So it's something to keep in mind for when you're rolling it because as you roll it, it is gonna kind of squish out a bit. So we can bring this apple butter all the way down to the edge closest to us. Really give it a nice even spread. Some, some clumps are okay. This is going to certainly squeeze out a little bit when we cut it, when we roll it and when we cut it. We're gonna leave about an inch worth up at the top because it will just squeeze out if we go all the way to the edge with it. But we can go all the way to the edge on the sides and down on the bottom. Just use the underneath of your spoon or the back of your spoon or a rubber spatula or even a pastry brush just to get this nice and spread out as even as possible. We don't want this to be so thin that it kind of melts away when it's cooked. We will still want to be able to see that swirl. 
starting at the edge down here, going to roll this tightly on itself. So start with about half inch to an inch worth of dough down at the bottom, fold it up on itself. And I like to kind of do this along the edge <laughs> just to kind of flatten it down and really make sure that it's sticking to itself because I want that nice tight roll in the center. Now we're just gonna keep folding it up on itself. Wipe off some of that excess flour as you roll. We don't need a ton of that. Okay, roll evenly on all sides. I start kind of in the middle and work my way to the other sides. Wanna make sure that it's still tight, but not crazy tight to where we're squishing out all of that apple butter goodness. Okay, and now I'm just gonna pull it up onto itself, kind of stretch it a little bit. It's okay, it doesn't need to be perfect because this is going to proof again. Okay, now I'm going to roll it onto the seam so that we can start cutting. And with it being on the seam, it's just gonna hold a little bit better. Okay, let's make sure that it's all pretty even and uniform. Should look just like a beautiful log. Okay, so we've got our oven preheating to 350. Even if we get these ones in a little bit before we get the other ones in, the residual heat that's gonna come out of the oven is gonna help our other doughs proof. So I start this in the middle. Never totally know how many I'm going to get, but I like to start in the middle and then cut on the end, cut kind of that excess dough off that isn't really meeting or lining up with itself. And then from there, I'm gonna cut into equal portions. So you'll notice right off the bat, some of these are, you know, a little misshapen. It's totally fine. And if you want to use these end pieces, you absolutely can. This one, actually, I think I'm gonna just tuck right in there. That's a little more cinnamon bun. Even if they don't look the prettiest, they're still gonna taste amazing. Now that we've got them all in there, you're gonna notice there is obviously a bunch of space, but this is going to proof a second time. And we're gonna use our handy dandy uh, plastic to just cover this and again to kind of keep that heat in and I've got the oven preheating so I'm just going to set these on top of the oven so that resi residual heat will kind of come up and um, help these guys wake up. Okay, so we've got our dough all rolled out. Now we've got some room temperature butter, slightly melted, and it's one stick or half a cup. And we're gonna add about a quarter cup of maple butter. Again, we're using pure maple syrup here. And now we're gonna add a bit more of the pumpkin pie spice, only about teaspoon or so and I'm gonna grab some brown sugar really only adding about a tablespoon or so of the brown sugar we're gonna mix it together and really that's just more for the texture and kind of giving the liquid um, something to kind of cling on to 
So we'll just use a spoon or a rubber spatula to get this all nice and mixed in. And it should be a pretty thick spread to spread onto our dough. Okay, so now that we've got that all mixed up, we're just going to get real generous with it and spread it onto our dough. This is going to be in the same way that we did the apple butter, so it can come right down to the bottom, but leave some room at the top to seal it. So as you can see, this one was a little bit tighter. This is my uh, lodge number 10. So this one is a little bit smaller than the Finex 12 that I have. So these are all <laughs> a little bit squished, but it just means that they're gonna kind of rise up instead of rising out. There's not as much place to fill. And these ones in theory should be a little bit gooier in the middle because of touching so much which I'm totally fine with that. A soft cinnamon bun or a crunchy cinnamon bun is a good cinnamon bun to me. So again, let's cover this with plastic wrap. I'm gonna put it on top of the oven with the apple butter one and allow these to proof a second time. So we're gonna cover these and once these have all proofed they're filling the casserole dishes that then we're going to pop them into a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes you'll know these are done when they are all golden brown on the top and they look still kind of fluffy on the inside we're not looking for the entire thing to be golden brown but the top edges okay can't wait And just like that, we have all of our cinnamon buns out of the oven. Now they just need a glaze and need to be eaten. So thankfully, I know plenty of little ones that are going to help with that in the morning. Now you can top these with just a regular royal icing glaze if you would like, but I also have some really fun special glazes that you can find on the website castironrecipes.com head over there and get the full recipe for any of these cinnamon buns. So go ahead and let me know which one is your favorite down in the comments. Hit subscribe and don't forget to stay tuned for more delicious recipes from my kitchen to yours, all cooked in cast iron. And we'll see you next time. Happy eating.